In this example, you're provided with the bass line, uh, so the bass voice, uh, the key, and you're supposed to um, then fill in the soprano, the alto, and the tenor voices, as well as the Roman numerals. Now, right now, we're just focused on um, root position Roman numerals, so we don't have to worry about inversions, which gives us a big hint as to what each chord is going to be. In a lot of ways, you know what the Roman numerals are going to be as long as you are familiar with uh, which Roman numerals typically or diatonically are going to be uppercase or lowercase. So even before we fill in the rest of the voices, we know that uh, this is going to be a one chord because the bass voice, again, because everything is in root position, the bass voice is C, which is one, scale degree one in the key of C major, followed by F, which is scale degree four, which would make it Roman numeral four, followed by D, which is scale degree two, which would make it Roman numeral two, which is lowercase in this case, uh, followed by scale degree five, if you can see it right here, the G, um, which would make it a five, and then back to one. Okay, so we can already um, add the Roman numerals just from the beginning, and let's do that right now since we know everything is in root position, because it'll give us a clue as to how we're going to uh, whoops, how we're going to add the additional voices below. Oops. So we know this is going to be a one chord followed by a four chord, uppercase, followed by a lowercase two chord, followed by uppercase five, followed by one again. We're going to move these all where they should be, which is below the line. Just click edit here. All right, great. Uh, next thing we're going to do is add the bass, uh, add the soprano, alto, and tenor voice. So typically you'll do it in the order of adding the bass voice first, followed by the soprano, because it's so incredibly important, I can't emphasize this enough, that the outer voices need, are going to pose the most problems. So they need to be the ones where you take the most care, Thus, you should start with them. Always start with the bass voice, then add the soprano voice. So let's go ahead and add soprano. And we'll again, we'll keep it simple. Sometimes you'll be required to make it a little bit more interesting, maybe required to add leaps certain places or, um, or, uh, or make it so that way the melodic line is a little bit more interesting. Later on, you might be asked to add uh, non-chord tones. But for right now, let's keep it as simple and thus as boring as possible. And from there, if you can do that really well, it makes it easier and um, makes it easier for you to uh, make it more complicated later. If you try to make it more complicated right away and you make all these mistakes and, and cause various parallelisms, you know, you're going to be, um, you're going to be doomed. So if you're making those mistakes, even as we keep it simple, we certainly aren't ready to uh, make it more complicated. So let's keep it as simple as possible. We're going to uh, somewhat arbitrarily start with Do. That's not a big deal. Scale degree 1. Uh, it gives us a lot of room. I'm going to start with scale degree 1, followed by, we're going to keep it with C. Uh, no need to leap if we don't need to. Let's stay put. In this case, we can stay put. C belongs both in the, key, in the 1 chord and the 4 chord. We're going to the 2 chord. Uh, next easiest thing to do, we can leap down to A, or in this case, I'd rather we move up to D. Uh, that's a stepwise motion, um, and so that makes it much easier to deal with. Followed by, let's maybe, eh, we may want to change this later, but let's keep it at D. Again, static motion is oftentimes very preferable because it's hard to create, it's impossible to create any sort of objectionable parallelism if one of the, uh, between two voices, if one of them isn't even moving. Uh, D, and then followed by C again. Okay, stepwise down to C. Okay, we could have moved up to E, but let's come back down to C and see what happens from there. Um, let's add the alto voice. I prefer to do that just because uh, I can see immediately the spacing issues that can, that can occur between the alto and soprano. If you go right to the tenor voice, there typically isn't going to be any spacing issue between the bass other than if you cross voices. But again, remember, between the tenor and the bass voice, you don't need to be within an octave, unlike the other uh, un unlike between tenor and alto and alto and soprano, those always need to be within an octave of those pairs of voices. But with bass, it can, there's a lot more freedom. So let's move to the mo next most problematic voice, which is the alto. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the C, uh, put the G there. 
Uh, it's right next to, it's close to the C, keeps it really uh, nice and simple. And then uh, I could have gone with E, but I'm going to go with G in this case. Keep it really close together. G followed by A. Okay, that works. Now we have a complete chord for the four chord, which gives us very many options for the next chord. Uh, let's stay put and stick with A. Um, in this note, we have an incomplete chord, but that's okay. We know now what we need to do for the, when we add that tenor voice. Uh, and it's nice that it's uh, static motion. Followed by, oops, followed by, let's go to T uh, to create the leading tone. And since uh, the nice thing here is that we've already got Do taken care of in the soprano line, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and put the leading tone even it's going to be resolved. Your ear is going to somewhat hear it because it's it's covered uh, by this voice right here. But we're going to go ahead and complete, make it a more complete chord by leaping down. Now, if this voice, if this T was in the upper voice in, in the soprano line or in the bass line, it must resolve to do. But in this case, you know you can uh, frustrate it a little bit, and in a sense, you, it doesn't necessarily need to go to do because. Uh, you have another voice covering it, and it's in, in it's in an inner voice, so uh, it's it's more hidden and not as problematic. Let's go ahead and add the tenor voice. We need to complete this chord, and what we're missing is the E. Now we can't put it down here because we have this spacing issue. So remember, spacing issue is going to be between either tenor and alto or alto and soprano. Never going to be an issue between um, tenor and bass. So E, we'll go to E. And then uh, let's go to F. That's not going to be a problem. It's stepwise. It's the next closest. No spacing issues either. And oh, look, very nice. We can maintain F. Nice static motion here as well, as the, only the outer voices are moving. And then let's go to G to, make, to complete this chord. So we have this nice texture right here. Um, potentially might encounter some voice crossing between the alto, but it, it's not really crossing, so uh, not really a big issue. And let's go ahead and complete this chord by ending with uh, scale degree three right there. So there you have it, uh, just kind of a short example of how to add not only the three upper voices if you're given the bass line, but also adding the Roman numerals, knowing full well for right now that you're only doing root position uh, chords. Um, when we introduce later on, when you're dealing with uh, chords and inversion, there's a slightly different approach that you can take, but um, it's uh, nonetheless, it's not that much more complicated than what you did here.